Hello and welcome to this instruction video for Microsoft Dynamics NAV. Today's topic is using deferrals in Microsoft Dynamics NAV 2016. The functionality shown in this video applies to all Microsoft Dynamics NAV 2016 versions. My name is Teunis Modderman and this video is presented to you by DSA Global Solutions. In this video you will learn how you use deferrals in Microsoft Dynamics NAV how to prepare deferral templates, and finally, which benefits the new functionality has for you. Now, let's open Microsoft Dynamics NAV. I'll start this demo with creating a purchase invoice that we want to defer. When I defer costs, I'm basically saying that these costs should not be a part of the income statement at the posting date of the transaction but on a different date and maybe even spread out through a couple of periods in time. I'll create a new invoice for vendor 20,000. I'll leave the posting date to the 26th of January as suggested and I'll enter the vendor invoice number. Then I'll continue with the lines saying that I want to post it as a uh, GL account and the uh, bill that I received is actually for electricity and heating and it comes with an uh, amount of 1200 GBP. Please notice the new field deferral code which has been automatically filled. Uh, the reason for that is that I assigned it as a default deferral template to the GL account card of the GL account that I'm using. The same field can also be found and on the item and resource cards. Of course, as most fields on the master record in uh, Microsoft Dynamics NAV, this is only a default. When you want to change it, when you get to a transaction, you can actually do that. After that I created the line, I can actually review the deferral schedule by selecting line and then deferral schedule. And it shows me the amounts that will be posted. Before I continue and uh, post this invoice, Let's now first have a look at the deferral template window and see why this schedule has been created as it just did. The deferral template comes with a code and a de description which identify the template and I can use them to select the proper schedule when I have one. You need to set up a, a deferral account. This is an account on the balance sheet that I'm using as an intermediate account. In this example, I have set up one for revenues and one for expenses. But it's of course possible to set up even more accounts if that helps me to report on the figures on the balance sheet in more detail. There is a deferral percentage, which is 100% by default, but I could de decide to defer only a part of the amount that I'm posting. The calculation method tells you how am I going to calculate this. Am I going to use straight line, an equal amount per period? Am I going to do this by the days within the period? If you're a month, that would be uh, the difference between 30 days or 31 days or February, which can have 28 or 29 days, of course, or user-defined. User-defined means that the system will only suggest the dates to you based on the values that I've entered in the field number of period and starting date which we will see next. But the person entering the actual transaction will then have to enter the amount for every period manually. Then I have the ability to tell the deferral when am I going to start all this. I can do it as of the posting date of the transaction. I can do it at the beginning of the period that I'm in, the end of the period that I'm in, or the beginning date of the next period. By the way, if you select posting date, that date will be chosen for the first period only. After that, it continues to suggest dates which are the first date of the following accounting periods. The number of periods fields refers to the accounting periods that I've set up in the system. This also means that I cannot defer per week or any other period like a quarter. It has to be per accounting period. The posting description is the description that will accompany the entries that I will be posting. In this field it is possible to use certain predefined variables. As you can see right here, I use number 4 and number 6. Uh, the program will replace them when a schedule is actually created. 
Let's have a quick look at which predefined options are available. Those are the variables or wildcards that you can use within the posting description of a deferral template. Uh, number one refers to the day of the month in numbers. Number two refers to the week of the year in numbers. Number three to the month of the year, also in numbers. Number four to the month of the year, but now in text. Number five, the name of the accounting period in text. And number six, the year, which is of course also in numbers. In the example template that I created, I used variables four and six. Now let's return to the invoice that I created and have another look at the schedule. Please notice the description of the lines. The variables that I use have been replaced by the month as text and the year. In the header of the schedule you can make changes to the amount to defer, the calculation method, the start date and the number of periods. So as you can see the deferral template only works as a template. I could for example change the number of periods and after doing that I have to push the button calculate schedule to recalculate what I've done. Before I actually am going to post the document, I can also use the new preview posting functionality, which will show you which entries will be created. If I look at the GL entries that will be created, you can see that this description to me is meaningful. You can also see that the department code is also included in the deferral entries. I guess you will understand that it's best to make meaningful templates, even if settings like calculation methods, starting date and number of periods are the same, but with a description that's relevant to you after having posted the document or lines. Now I'll post this invoice and verify the result. After having posted it, I can find my invoice of course under posted documents and push the navigate button. Please notice that the page with the GL entries will at first not show you all the entries since the navigate page filters on both the document number and the posting date. And the deferred entries will of course have a different posting date. So you will have to remove the filter for the posting date to see all entries. Finally, there is a new purchase deferral summary report which provides an overview of deferred expenses for each vendor. It will show you the total amount deferred. It will show you how much has already been posted and how much will be posted shortly. Similar reports are available for deferred revenue and GL transactions. All the other options that you have seen in this video are also available in the sales module and in the general ledger module. That's more or less all there is to tell about using deferrals in Microsoft Dynamics NAV. To summarize, it comes with the following benefits. It enables additional financial functionality. It comes with easy to use deferral templates. It reduces time and effort to defer revenues and expenses. And it enables reporting on deferred amounts for customers, vendors and GL accounts. Thank you for watching this video.